It's Platt, and today I show you how to make blueberry bourbon. That's next. So recently I reviewed a book in one of my Beer of the Week uh, videos called The Home Distiller's Handbook. And I talked about how it really wasn't a distilling book, but it's more an infusion book about how to do different infusions. And there was a couple real cool recipes in there, and I said, hey, I might, you know, uh, try one of the recipes. And one of them is for blueberry bourbon. And I thought, well, what a great excuse. Um, I have just did the recently an old granddad video, so I've got some bourbon sitting around. So I thought, let's try makes blueberry bourbon. A uh, real simple, straightforward recipe. You need some blueberries, you need some bourbon, and you need some kind of mason jar or one quart jar um, to do the infusions. If you've never done infusions before, man, they're kind of great fun. They let you uh, kind of personalize or tweak things to your flavor. Um, a good example is uh, the different vodkas. You know, if you want to make jalapeno vodka or something like that for your Bloody Marys. Or, you know, you like gin but you want some more, uh, some more uh, flavor or, or more uh, botanicals in there. You could, you know, go back and add and you don't have to worry about necessarily making the spirit itself. You just take the raw spirit and do, you know, whatever you want. And you can tweak the flavor how you like. Infusions are absolutely fun. So, like I said, I thought we would... Uh, try this one today. Um, now that I got everything together, let's make some blueberry bourbon. All right, so what I did was I added two thirds of a cup of blueberries uh, to my one quart jar. Now, some people, depending on their point of view, uh, when they talk about infusion, some people say muddle fruit, some people say don't muddle the fruit. The don't muddle fruit crowd is kind of referring to if you press skins on grapes or berries or anything like that, you can extract some of the tannins out of the skin. And that is true. That's a, a huge in the winemaking world is those tannins and those skins, what have you. And uh, even in home brewing, they say if you're... Uh, if you're doing like a brew in a bag, not to squeeze the bag too much because you might get some tannins even from the, uh, the grain husk or whatever. We're not necessarily worried about that here because of the type of spirit we're using. We're using a, a bourbon, a pretty hearty high ride bourbon um, that we're not worried about some tannins, you know, skewing the flavor uh, that much. Maybe in a true neutral spirit. You could worry about that, but we're not going to worry about that. So we're going to go ahead and muddle again to kind of open that fruit up, you know, to really kind of extract. We're not going to go crazy with the muddling. We're just as a light press just to open that fruit up. And then all we're going to do is just top off the jar. Uh, Gonna top that off and then uh, put our lid on. We are gonna let this sit for a couple of days and then you'll want to come back every day to taste. Uh, each thing that you infuse has kind of a different shelf life. Um, some really vibrant herbs like cilantro and stuff, maybe a day or two is all you need and then, then you've got it. Uh, some fruits, pineapple and stuff like that, you may let go for. 10 days, two weeks. So it kind of depends on uh, what you're, you're using to infuse. But we're going to come back a couple days, taste this, and this should be done anywhere between two and five days. So we're going to let this sit and we'll come back in a few days, give her a try, and uh, see what we got. All right, so uh, earlier in the video, I said we'd be be somewhere between two and five days. This is actually day six. I let it go a little longer because I really love the blueberry taste and uh, I'll explain a little bit more where I'm going with that later on but she should be ready by now. Uh, real quick I want to talk to you about filtering uh, when you do these kind of infusions. 
uh, different methods. Uh, you could use uh, probably the easiest thing is a coffee filter. You can find these dirt cheap at a dollar store. Um, one thing about the coffee filter is it has kind of a finer grain. Just think about you know what it's built for. Um, so it may take a while for the, the liquid to work through, so just be prepared for that. But uh, this is cheap, easy, easy way to do it. Uh, also cheesecloth, you can find it in the grocery store. Again, this is great, another uh, filtration. I'm just going to use, I have a little plastic uh, strainer here. I didn't muddle those berries too hard, and I'm not worried about little fine pieces or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and filter our blueberry bourbon. Oh, that smells beautiful. And I picked a container that made my filtration easier. All right, so now the important part, let's give it a try. Man, I got a lot of that. It has changed that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> a little mess there, but we'll clean that up. Um, wow, it's changed the color. It reminds me of like a lighter Pinot Noir, almost color-wise. Uh, the nose is mellowed out. You know, it's not hot on the nose like a normal, you know, higher proof spirit would be. Oh, let's give her a try. Well, that's nice. That's real nice. Um, the grand, old granddad still comes through. Um, the blueberries, fairly soft, but it's on the back side, but it, it's still there. Um, again, the intensity of the rye is kind of matched with the dark fruit notes that you, you would get there. I'm going to say it almost feels like it's kind of mellowed the whiskey out a little bit, which, which is crazy because, like I said, I said Granddad was high, high rye, had kind of an aggressive bite in more of an old school type bourbon. This is a lot, a good bit more mellow or whatever. But the real reason I did this and why I brought up the blueberry flavor and the intensity is I am going to add this to an Arnold Palmer, a little iced tea, a little lemonade. Um, I've always liked berry vodkas and straight lemonade, I think once you add a berry flavor bourbon in with like the lemonade, iced tea, I think there's a lot of complimentary flavors. Um, maybe throw some mint in there. Uh, I remember doing a, a bourbon iced tea video years ago. Kind of the same premise, but I think these flavors really work well in a blueberry vodka or blueberry bourbon in, the, in a classic Arnold Palmer, just a nice refreshing drink, the sweet, the sour, you know, the uh, classic, you know, kind of the woodiness also, uh, those kind of vanilla caramel notes you get off a of classic bourbon, all kind of work together. And so that's what I'm gonna do with this, is uh, filter this out, or finish filtering this out, add it to, uh, Arnold Palmer and uh, have a lovely afternoon. <laughs> uh, real quick to wrap up, I want to talk about this particular one. We uh, had a 750 milliliter bottle of Old Granddad. I had two thirds a cup of blueberries. I let this sit for six days, two to five is the general kind of range. Again, taste each day, know what your taste points you're kind of looking for. Uh, and uh, you could do this. You know, again, with neutral spirits like vodka or gin, but I'm telling you, whiskeys, adding a little bit of fruit, especially these dark berries or whatever, I think turns out real nice. Um, maybe do a cherry-infused bourbon and then use that in old-fashioned, something like that. So, well, anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bombs up.